Hey guys, we're back on aircraft again this week, and we'll be looking at another Lindbergh kit, something we have not done in quite some time, with their 1-128th scale uh, B-58 Hustler. Let's open her on up and take a look. Okay, uh, first up, uh, we've got sprue containing parts for the main gear, which are done in a very odd configuration. Uh, this will become more evident when we get into the instruction sheet. Uh, we also have our pilot figures, and for an odd reason, they decided to do the figures split in half long ways. And why the sculpting on the figures themselves is not terrible, especially for the scale. The fact that they're split half ways like this is going to make cleanup and presenting them darn near impossible. The only saving grace is that they really will not be seen once you assemble them inside the fuselage. Uh, continuing on, we do also have parts for two of the engines and their underwing pods. Uh, surface detailing is minimal and all of it raised. I'm not sure how well this will show up on camera. Uh, part of the control surfaces as well on this sprue and the main deck for the cockpit area. Uh, next up we've got additional parts for the engines and the undersides. Some of the cockpit instrumentation as well as parts for main and nose gears. Our exhausts, which actually aren't terrible. They're manageable. Uh, or, excuse me, inlet fans, nose cone, and more control surfaces, plus a small little display sigil, which is adequate. It's a nice little inclusion. Now another area this kit surprisingly did decently are the engine details. Now, are they, you know, super fantastic, super detailed? No, but for the scale and given Lindbergh's history, they're surprisingly not terrible. Uh, and honestly, you could theoretically actually display them out on their own, which is a bit surprising. Last up, we've got last bits for the engine pods, the cockpit covers for the crew, and all of our gear doors, wheels, and parts for the under pod we've got here. Now, fit on this is absolutely terrible. I mean, this is going to take a lot of work to get just so you can put it together. Now, one thing I do like that they did is these connecting points on the wings and similarly on the pod with the intention you push it in, slide it back. I like this. However, as you saw on the pod, the fit on these is atrocious. I can't... Uh, and to be honest, I think the main issue is these uh, holes are simply not big enough for the pegs. And so I think an easy fix for these would be to open it up a little and this should hopefully improve some of the fit issues here. But even then, I mean, just getting these together, you know, dry fitting them for you is problematic to say the least. Uh, as far as main gear goes, there's basically no detail. Um, one of the, I guess, gimmicks for this kit is you can, um, once you install the landing gear, reposition them, which is gimmicky at best, and I'm not even sure how well that's going to work out. Uh, last up, we've got our clear parts. They're, again, not terrible, which is actually pretty good for Lindbergh. <laughs> and then lastly, we have our two fuselage halves. I've sort of test fit it, it off camera, hence why they're popping off. Uh, there is a little bit of surface detailing for the cockpit, but 
be honest, none of that's really going to be seen once you close it up. So I would say, I mean, if you're going to do anything, just give it a, a little bit of a wash and call it a day. It's not worth the effort to do much of anything. Again, as I said before, fit on this is atrocious. And there's some pretty nasty poor stubs left over that I guess they tried to clean up in the factory. Now let's get all this back. Now moving on to decals. The decals, there are several of them, to be honest, I, I'm not even sure if they'll work, especially these black ones. I'm not sure how well this will show up on camera, but there's like some odd, almost textural like splotches to it. Uh, I'm not really sure how other to describe it. So I'm not sure if these decals will work at all. Uh, there is some yellowing to them, and some of the colors just seem a little undersaturated, I guess is the best word to describe, uh, especially here in the insignias. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's they do seem a little on the thick side, because even, and I'm not sure how well, again, this will show up on camera, Let's see if the light will catch it just right. I don't think it's going to do it. But you can tell there's a very thick raised edge to it. So, again, decals, not the greatest. All right, now on to the instruction sheet. Uh, assembly begins in the cockpit area. Again, since most of it's not going to be seen once you close it up, I would say don't spend too much time there in terms of detailing. Uh, beyond that, nose gear is pretty good. Everything, for most part, is simple and basic, exception being these main gears. These are going to be a bit of a challenge to do, and are a bit on the excuse me, complex side. As I said, meant to be positionable, so that is something to be aware of. Now, as for the engines, they're actually not terrible, like I said. Uh, assembly is pretty straightforward building up from the main engines themselves and then enshrouding them in the in the pods for closing them up onto the wing. I get several different marking options for a actual um, deployed bird, uh, two actually, excuse me, and then actually one of the prototypes. Overall, I'd say of all the options, this is probably the most interesting just because, you know, it's a little bit different. So, overall, is the kit god-awful like a lot of Lindbergh kits? Surprisingly, no. There's a couple of actual decent points in this kit. Now, is it going to win any awards if it does the judges are blind this is a kit that will require a lot of tlc to get up to decent standards but that's thankfully helped by pretty decent engines on it so is it one that you have to get no is it one to maybe give to somebody to play around with yeah it might be be one to give to somebody who wants to learn how to do filling, adding detail, and all that. It, it's definitely one to consider for that. But outside of that, um, it's one you could probably pass. So that was a look at Lindbergh's 1 128th scale B58 Hustler. A kit with some problems, but a couple diamonds in the rough in terms of detail. So until next time.